The view of uh, President Ramaphosa in the Johannesburg CBD a little earlier today. Eldrin Sampier is working that story for us this lunchtime. Interestingly, the ANC, though, perhaps doesn't have as many details on it as the President does. As the President There's does. a dichotomy there. Certainly, and also considering that the report may have been handed over to the president in December or January. So, so many months and weeks have passed on, and yet the ANC hasn't had any sight of the report. This is now according to the Secretary General of the, of the ANC, Ace Mahashula, who we spoke to while we were in the train. And just interesting, looking at the clip there where some Gela was speaking to the president, you had Ace Mahashula walking right behind the president, and there was the president speaking so confidently about this report. But Ace Mahashula, the Secretary General of the party, is literally in the dark. And just take a listen uh, to what he had to say when I asked him about um, this report early on this morning. We haven't seen the report. Uh, we haven't yet. We have just uh, heard about the report over the media. I'm sure we'll be fully briefed and the ANC will be able to comment thereafter. Are you saying the president released the report without the ANC even knowing about it? Well, the president, uh, that is government, uh, no, we didn't know. We haven't received the report as the ANC. So making it very clear that they haven't seen the report, a little embarrassing for the party, but you'll also tell us, Eldrin, that um, the clock is ticking as far as all of this is concerned because of the upcoming election. Well, certainly it's mm. a hot potato that the party is dealing with because if you look at the report and uh, the likes of Matlobo, who was speaking yesterday on this report, who have been implicated by inference, are making the argument that our names are not mentioned in the report. But of course, if you look at all, when you try to connect all the dots and try to check it, when was uh, Matlobo the Minister of, States, uh, of the State Security Agency? When, um, when was Siabonga Kwele the Minister of, State Security, uh, of the State Security Agency? There's certainly a time frame that points to they were in the state security agency during um, during that period and these are people who find themselves also on the list of the ANC as MPs that will be going to um, going to Parliament and this is the list they'll be going to the a to the IEC to be submitted later this week on Wednesday doesn't the ANC have something called the integrity commission certainly the integrity commission is actually asked to see the list that will be heading um, to the IEC they expected the list to be handed over to them this weekend this weekend they actually had a meeting I spoke to a George Mashamba was the chairperson of the commission and he said that well, quite frankly, the report, the list wasn't given to us. We don't have an explanation why the list wasn't given to us. But the ANC's top six is meeting today. Then you also have the NWC, the extended NWC, that will also be meeting mm -hmm. around some of the objections that some people might have. But there will be another opportunity, I believe, for the Integrity Commission, and that will be on Wednesday, just before the list is finally submitted. In the meantime, one can assume that uh, former President Zuma will continue to push out uh, the very strong tweets that he's been yep. doing already yep. oh, and, mm. and, and that's what we expect that the president mm. is going to is going to push back but quite interestingly for me though is that if you have this report and this report speaks about a former president and I believe that at this point we can only look at one former president and that former president will be a former president Jacob Zuma what is the integrity commission going to do about that because now you have president Jacob Zuma implica former president Jacob Zuma implicated in this report and he remains a senior member of the party and of course he will still be continuing on the campaign trail for the party as We've well been talking about internal party mechanics but surely at some point we've got to start talking about criminal prosecution and that's what the argument from save us AS has been as well Sipo Bikiano who's arguing that if you look at this intelligence report and how um, the state security resources have been used to spy on some of these organizations like save us when they were marching against the president he's arguing that at some point there must be criminal charges being laid against the president because Sipo Pikyan is saying that all the fingers are pointing at one person and that person is the former president of the country. And just finally, it would be a fair question to ask uh, as to what or to what extent all of this has had an impact on our intelligence gathering capacity right now. Something that we'll have to wait and see. And very interesting for me about this is that when you look at, for instance, the issues that have been happening around Vwani, remember when all those schools were being burned, and the argument was that the state security agencies are not focusing on all the intelligence that they're receiving. What is making them not focus on those issues? And some may argue that it was because of this political um, interference that was taking place at the time. And when we see as well the report mentioning that there were at least three intelligence agencies that have been warning um, the executive about the Gupta family and nothing happened. This, uh, the, 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 commission of Inquiry, the State Commission of Inquiry is actually expecting um, those three people to testify and be very interesting to hear what they say about the role of the ministers at the time when they're being warned.
This story has only just begun. Eldrin Sampier, thank you very much. Now, the Encarta Freedom Party is calling for the reinstatement of the uh, death penalty. Mangsutu Butelezi launching the party's election manifesto in Durban at the weekend. And it seems he's not afraid to tackle some controversial issues, as ENCA's Sipa Mandlagoge tells us.